In today's video, I want to tell you guys about some LEGO Star Wars sales and promos going on that you guys do not want to miss out on. Also, there is a new LEGO Star Wars 2024 book that got leaked. And then lastly, I want to cover one more new LEGO Star Wars designer interview where he basically gives us the, the biggest kind of subtle hint of them all regarding the fact that there's more and more likely going to be a slightly different Phase 2 Captain Rex minifigure coming out in the future. So let's get into all of it. So welcome back everyone to another LEGO Star Wars video and my apologies for not uploading for the past couple days. So today I've actually got like, you know, four or five or six different things I want to cover. Uh, first thing, if you guys do want to help support the channel and get some uh, cheaper LEGO uh, for the rest of October, I'm running a 40% off of everything on my Brickling store. Uh, it is Indie Brick Den. There should be a link down below or just, uh, you know, just type in the internet bar, um, Indie Brick Den. And I'm running 40% off all parts, minifigures and sets. I've got over 600,000 parts, about 600 different minifigures and 100 different sets and uh, 40 lot limit just to kind of keep it fair and uh, ensure that all orders ship out um, in a timely manner but if you guys do want to help support the channel and uh, get some lego in return uh, definitely go place an order over there um, of course you know the sale is going to be running all week but uh, every order that goes by uh, more and more you know cool stuff gets bought so so just know i really do appreciate in advance if you guys end up placing an order next up guys uh one thing if you guys are in the usa i do want to kind of bring this to your attention this is kind of the first and kind of uh, lego star wars history um is actually at your Costco, I would maybe run over there when you guys have a chance and uh, take a look because at least in some of the, the bigger Costco's in like California and uh, Arizona and Utah from what I've seen are actually getting the UCS Razor Crest in uh, $600 down to $500. So uh, that is not as good of a deal as what Lego was just running the other week. But what I can say with this, of course, is, you know, sure, if you want to buy it at 500 that's a very fair deal. But, you know, Costco always has that chance of getting their stuff to go lower. So, you know, say if you wait two or three weeks and maybe your local Costco ends up having, you know, five or six left over, I mean, they could quite frankly maybe bring that thing down to 350 or 400 which at that point, look, if you're checking your Costco's every week, if you're already kind of grocery shopping there, uh, definitely check out your Lego section, uh, see what they got over there. I know they've also got, um, you know, every Costco is different, but most of them do have the uh, the Mandalorian and uh, Fang Fighter, or the Man Mandalorian. Lauren Fang Fighter and TIE Interceptor uh, two packs at 100 down to 60. So uh, bottom line of it, UCS Razor Crest is showing up in your Costco's. And as always, I'm not trying to be a direct hater, but you guys know my thoughts on the UCS Razor Crest. And, uh, you know, first time in history, you know, UCS uh, gets put in, uh, you know, a Costco, you know, Star Wars one at least. And uh, is that a telltale sign that um, it ain't selling too hot? And, uh, you know, a lot of other people share my opinion that, uh, you know, didn't have to be made. The moving on here, we actually have a Lego.com promo that I want to kind of, you know, remind you guys about and actually tell you guys a little uh, little secret, I guess, that maybe some of you guys don't know about. So um, usually when LEGO runs, you know, Disney promos, they're only counting the actual, like, straight-up Disney-branded sets, like the Disney Princess stuff and uh, basically the stuff from, like, the movies, like Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, that type of stuff. But um, surprisingly, for the first time kind of ever in history that I know about, at least, um, you know, they're actually allowing for a Disney promo um, all of the other IP that Disney owns. So Indiana Jones, um, Avatar, they're letting uh, Star Wars, they're letting Marvel. So if you guys do want a mini Steamboat Willie set right now, which it's fetching about 35 to 40 $40. So if you guys spend like right over $100 on, you know, Lego Star Wars or, you know, you, you get yourself a, a Corsair Guard gunship, say for $140, uh, you could technically sell that Steamboat Willie if you're into that, uh, you know, for about $40 and to get a nice little chunk of money back. So for the first time ever, uh, they're actually allowing Disney IP stuff to be included in Disney promos, which I think that's a great thing. I think that's always been something that uh, people have kind of brought up as kind of a, you know, a slight little joke, but, you know, there's some validity behind that. You know, if you, are saying that on a promo you have to buy Disney sets uh, technically look every Star Wars box for the past you know, nine years has had a Disney logo on the bottom. Uh, what makes that not a Disney set? So in case you guys weren't aware of that, uh, mini Steamboat Willie, uh, you know, truthfully about a $35, $40 little promo right here. If you guys don't care about that set itself, uh, buy some Star Wars, uh, sell off that promo and uh, get a little chunk of money back. Then also speaking of lego.com and kind of just, you know, kind of the sale uh, game in general, moving into November with Black Friday and, uh, you know, all these online deals going on. If you guys do want to sign up for Rakuten uh, using my link, 
think it is a cashback program. Uh, you know, places like Walmart, Kohl's, Lego.com, Target, they often run, you know, two to three, sometimes even five or 10% back cashback. And if you guys do sign up using my link and within 90 days make a qualifying purchase of $40 or more, uh, you guys will get $40 and I will also get $40. So, so an awesome way to help support the channel and uh, definitely throughout, you know, Black Friday season, all these, you know, sales seasons, um, not a bad little way to uh, kind of build up that cash back as well. And speaking of Kohl's, which, you know, Kohl's is a, uh, you know, website and a store that Rakuten supports. They're running just a simple little 1% cash back right now. But uh, the more important thing is, if you guys do know that Kohl's has an exclusive mech three pack, uh, where it's basically all the three Lego Star Wars mechs. Uh, sadly, only, you know, in a three in one box for retail at Kohl's, which kind of sucks, but they are having it for um, uh, roughly 20% off right now, about 15% off, uh, 48 down to 38. So uh, definitely not too bad of a little buy if you guys want to pick it up for 38. That's what I did. I still think there's room for it to go even cheaper, uh, you know, closer to middle of November, end of November. So uh, maybe wait on it if you guys want, but I think nonetheless, again, you're, you're paying for that three in one box art. If you guys want to keep it sealed for a while, ha have a nice little piece in your collection. I think paying under $40 ain't too bad, but of course, the closer you get down to uh, roughly that 30 mark, I feel be perfect for that three pack and kind of uh, what it should have been from the get go. But uh, moving on guys to some actual 2024 stuff. Now we have um, our first look at a new Lego Star Wars 2024 book that got leaked. Uh, sadly, there is no brand new minifigure to it, but um, this is another one of those things that will pretty much only be found in European countries. And uh, it's a simple little thing that you guys will find at your uh, your little grocery stores. Basically, wherever you guys find the the books already that have a minifigure or the the paper bags these days, um, this will be in that exact same spot. And this is the Mandalorian Warriors one. Uh, basically, you know, look who kind of knows what's inside. I don't know. I don't pay too much attention. Uh, again, I live in the USA. I don't personally get these, but um, this does have the Mandalorian fleet uh, commander or fleet trooper from the uh, the Fang Fighter set earlier this year. So if you guys want to talk about you know exclusive minifigure getting put into something cheaper um this is that case uh you know and i've always kind of said i don't really care when that happens you know again value isn't everything at the end of the day anyway but uh when it happens to you know armyable characters where like it is the right thing where everyone has, you know, 10, 15, 20, 25. Although I guess this guy's technically a named character, but I mean, he didn't even have a line on the show. So uh, people are kind of just using this guy as a, uh, you know, armiable, you know, massable character. But, and uh, even then in the USA, it's really not going to affect the price because anyone in the USA itself will have to import these anyway. But um, definitely a nice thing where, again, if you're in one of these European countries, uh, maybe you're going to the grocery store, picking up, you know, a dozen eggs and, uh, and a gallon of milk. And you're like, Hey, I'll pick up a fleet trooper for uh four euros or something like that you know not too bad so um that is coming out presumably in january or february of next year so uh not too shabby all right guys so with all that knocked out of the way like i said there's a few things i wanted to cover before i got into this because it's been a few days since the last video uh basically let's get into the actual designer interview involving captain rex's future so this right here first off before we get into captain rex i do want to give a big shout out to this new dune set and uh, whoever this minifigure is right here for uh Literally taking up about 50 Captain Rex's worth of cloth right here. And uh, yeah, that's pretty funny right there. If you guys are wondering why Captain Rex does not have a cloth waist cape these days, uh, this Dune minifigure is to thank. But uh, let's move on to the Brick Fanatics interview again. As always, go check them out. Uh, they are a blog post, a YouTube channel. Um, and, and I'm really hoping again here soon. I, I don't know. David said a couple weeks ago, and like there's clearly footage of most of this interview with all the the land people like they're all like in that one room there's you know clearly footage of like almost all of it if not all of it and i'm really hoping that's what david you know solid bricks actually like releases in the next couple of weeks uh he he said he has a, an interview with them i don't know if it's one of those things where uh maybe he got a a little private side 30 minute interview which would also be interesting because at that point that would mean that we really haven't heard anything from that yet but um brick fanatics is you know kind of like posting these uh, a little bit earlier you know he they did that one video clip the other day i reacted to and then all these other different little articles uh this basically the article title here is lego says the ucs minifigures were clear-cut choices so uh this is a little uh question to that madison o'neill uh minifigure designer and uh, this is basically what they say right here you know brick fanatics asked you know was there any thoughts about um other minifigures how'd you guys come up with the rex and you alarm and uh, madison o'neill says um admiral you was a pretty clear choice for something like this uh just because we always see him on the bridge um as far as characters associated with a specific vehicle he's definitely up there and then rex i think the discussion was uh which characters are people going to be most excited about 
He also goes on to say, and of course he was right there at the top of the list as well, so I don't think there was a ton of discussion, to be honest, regarding who we were putting in. Uh, there were pretty clear-cut choices for us in that regard. Uh, he also goes on to say uh, they are kind of capturing the whole gamut of Clone Wars in a way. I think at the uh, the time we were working on The Venator, that last season of Clone Wars was very popular with everyone. Uh, we were talking about it a lot. So adding that little extra detail to Rex, keep that in mind, uh, makes it something a little special, a little unique. So, all right, guys, so there is the, uh, the quick little answer from him. And let's kind of cover some key points off of that. So I feel like the first thing I want to cover is... You know, in a scenario like this, I feel like whether you like Rex or not, or don't like Rex, the kind of overarching thing I see people have said, you know, from both sides is the fact that there's only too many figures in the set. And, uh, you know, you look at stuff like the Avengers Tower, there's like 30. You look at some of these other sets, you know, there's 5, 10, 15 minifigures. But um, I genuinely do think, and I, I'm under strong belief on UCS sets, you know, MBS sets are different. You know, Moss Eisley Cantina, you know, any Ewok Village stuff, you know, give us those 2025 figs. And honestly, I would classify the Avengers Tower as like a Marvel MBS set, if you know what I'm saying. But like something like the Venator, where I feel like the, the main substance of that set is the ship. We've been dealing with this, you know, for the past 10, 15 years of, you know, there was a one point we'd get zero minifigures in, in UCSS. And then we were getting one, maybe two of them. And basically every May 4th one, we would just get the pilot. And I think these days, I think it's kind of to be expected and something that we should kind of almost look forward to in the fact of, you know, Lego focuses everything on the actual vehicle, making it as big and as detailed as possible, which is what you would want, uh, you know, in a, a $650 set of anything. And then hopefully, they didn't do it too well in this set, but then hopefully at that point, only having, say, two minifigures to worry about, you know, they can kind of make them perfect. So that's my take on that, at least. When I'm buying UCS sets, I really only worry about the build, but that's not to say that the minifigures can just at that point be terrible. You know, I do still think, again, especially when you're comparing, there's only one or two minifigures on some of these big UCS Star Wars sets. They should be tip-top shape at that point. You know, they're not messing with 15 different minifigures where they got to do different prints and different molds. All it is at this point is two minifigures. And again, I think you will Lawrence pretty much fine. Uh, Captain Rex, of course, you guys kind of know the, uh, the public complaints amongst the community. You know, you guys know my personal complaints, but... At the end of the day, uh, that's basically that. And so the two minifigures themselves, I can't blame them on. I think it makes perfect sense. Uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, in this scene specifically, if they are talking about Clone Wars Season 7, that Captain Rex is the way to go. Uh, Admiral Yul Lauren, I think, is a, a perfect inclusion. I think kind of, you know, the, the biggest question I feel like was, you know, when they did a UCS Venator, was it going to be Clone Wars or Episode 3? They go Clone Wars, of course, and those two minifigures are perfectly fine choices. Again, this execution probably just isn't perfect. But uh, the biggest thing to take home from this, and then we're going to close off this video here. All right. You know, Madison O'Neill himself says, so adding that extra little detail to Rex, you know, as Clone Wars Season 7 was coming out. So uh, specifically the inhibitor chip up there. Okay. Makes it something a little special and a little unique here. Okay. You tie that in with the fact of in the instructions, it actually says these two minifigures are exclusive. Okay. You know, Lego can easily backtrack on that. Uh, you know, technically they are exclusive at this current point. You know, not to say that, you know, if it's eight months from now, if they re uh, you re-release them, you know, they're still exclusive to the Venator for when they actually printed that book. So they're not necessarily lying on that, but if they want to kind of hold true to that, Okay, I do still think, and I think all of us can agree, I think Admiral Yul Lauren will probably remain exclusive for pretty much ever. I don't really see another way that he could come in something unless it's like a, a paper bag or, um, you know, a little, uh, maybe a May 4th promo at some point, May 4th promo, a paper bag or one of those, you know, European books. But the Captain Rex in particular, okay, mix that with the fact there is a, uh, a decent little rumor going on. Again, like kind of the stage above like nothing, you know, kind of some people are talking about it was a little bit of credibility of uh you know rex actually coming back in 2024 in a cheaper set okay mixing this with the fact of you know madison o'neill himself kind of says all right look for this set itself we were looking at clone war season seven they made captain rex that way due to the hype of the show you know they made it a little extra unique a little extra special Move that into 2024, uh, you give us a, a Captain Rex in a cheaper set, which for the mass majority of fans is fantastic, you know, easier to access for, you know, say 15 bucks in a mech or 80 bucks in a Y-Wing, okay? You, you leave the exclusiveness, you know, to the Venator Rex because of that headpiece, and then you bring Captain Rex into that set without the inhibitor chip removal piece or, you know, the little print on there, and everyone at the end of the day kind of has 
uh, a play in that. You know what I mean? Lego is proper on keeping it exclusive. Okay, the people that bought the Venator that, you know, say care about exclusive minifigures, you know, the ULR is still, you know, still exclusive. Uh, the Captain Rex is fundamentally exclusive. Um, you know, that part is exclusive. You know, it's going to remain a little higher value because of that. And then everyone else that say doesn't want to spend six fifty, uh, can't spend six fifty. Uh, they're able to get another Captain Rex that at that point makes more sense anyway because you know this Captain Rex from the Venator really can only come in the Venator. I guess this one could come in a Clone Wars, you know, five hundred first Y wing also. Uh, but you know, that's, he's kind of very limited as to where he would make sense anyway because of the inhibitor chip uh, print on there. So at the end of the day, here I think this is a, a pretty big little sign. Okay, that I think Lego has probably always thought, all right, let's drop this guy in the $650 set. And of course, from a business perspective, you can't blame him. Okay, you can't blame him. All right, uh, but then later, you know, the next year, the following year, put him in that cheaper set, make him a little bit different, keep the $650 one exclusive, and uh, let the, the, the mass majority of consumers um, have a fun time uh, with that cheaper one. So hey guys, so that's everything for today's video to kind of just kind of rehash everything really quick. So if that rumor for a 2024 summer Captain Rex is true, it looks like, yes, we'll be getting that minifigure then. And then what Madison says over here about uh, you know the $650 one, it does look like there will be a slight difference with that cheaper one if it does end up coming out and that rumor is true for 2024 so uh thank you guys all so much for watching i'll leave your thoughts down below and everything in this video again check out my bricklink store for that sale and uh stay tuned for more videos this week guys i'll see you guys on the next one bye guys and stay safe